I was out hunting one evening, just like I usually do, going deeper into the mysterious forest. The sun was setting, and its last light showed me the way ahead. I felt confident because I had hunted for many years. But this time, something felt off. I had a feeling that someone was watching me. Suddenly, strange noises started all around me, like someone was walking softly on fallen leaves. I strained my ears, trying to figure out where the sounds were coming from, but all I heard was something weird, something unbelievable. It sounded like a wolf's howl, but unlike any I'd ever heard. I slowed down and started listening carefully to the dark forest around me. The woods felt unfamiliar and unfriendly. I looked around, trying to spot anything unusual, but the shadows made it hard to see. My heart was beating faster, and I realized I wasn't alone. Something more significant than a wolf, something monstrous, was in the darkness with me. I turned toward the sounds, but it was nearly impossible to see. Suddenly, deep in the thickets, I saw a pair of living eyes shining in the last light of the sunset. The eyes looked like an animal's, but they had a strange intelligence, something human. That's when I understood that this hunt, which had started as a regular one, had become a nightmare. I wasn't alone in this forest, and I was in danger. As I stared into those strange eyes, I slowly stepped back. I saw a strange man's shape among the trees for a moment. He was dressed in rough, forest-colored clothes that blended with the trees, making him seem like a part of the dark forest. Who are you? I asked, trying to sound brave, but I was trembling inside. The man looked at me, his gaze mysterious and silent. He didn't answer my question. Instead, he asked me, How long have you been in this forest? I felt uneasy. Just a few hours. I replied, not sure why it mattered that I had arrived recently. The man nodded, but his eyes stayed on me. What are you looking for in this forest? His question sounded like he already knew the answer. I felt a strange sense of unease. I'm looking for peace and some prey for dinner. That's all I want. The man smiled with a bitter, eerie smile that sent me chills. Do you think you're alone in this forest and control it? His words made me wonder. I felt that this forest held secrets beyond my understanding. What are you? I asked, afraid of the answer. The man slowly came closer, his hand touching my cheek. He smiled and said, We are the forest. We know when others enter our world. You'll vanish here, just like everyone else. Suddenly, everything around me turned dark and shapeless. I couldn't see the strange man anymore, but I realized he was part of the forest, just like everything else. Like a werewolf, he ran away from me, leaving only mysterious words that plunged me into the depths of this eerie forest, where I now became part of its frightening mysteries. My heart was pounding so hard it felt like it might burst out of my chest. In terror, I realized I couldn't stay in that forest. I turned and ran deeper into the dark woods. My legs carried me through the darkness, and I didn't dare look back fearing what I might see. When I finally got out of that forest, covered in sweat with dry tears on my face, no one believed my story. Everyone I told thought it was my imagination or fatigue from hunting. But inside me, the fear and the belief that something unknown lurked in that dark forest remained. My encounter with that strange man, who was part of the forest itself, would stay with me forever. I could never return to that forest. Perhaps that was the smartest choice. The story of the werewolf in the forest remained only with me, and no one else could confirm my account. But on nights when the wind rustles through the trees and the moon shines brightly, I sometimes hear strange sounds and a howling that reminds me that the peculiar man still roams among the trees, searching for something hidden in the forest's darkness.
I might have escaped a terrible fate that is incredibly hard to believe. I was 16 years old, and the story I'm about to tell you happened to me 15 years ago. During the summer, after a long day, my friends and I often went to the railroad tracks to line the grass on a hill and watch passing trains. We were particularly fascinated by passenger trains, where there seemed to be a mysterious and distant life behind the windows of the carriages. In our group, Michael was often a guy a little older than us. He talked a lot, like a child, and was always laughing. His inability to connect with peers was perhaps because he didn't drink alcohol. He didn't have a steady job either. But he helped at the station with loading and unloading wagons or at the sawmill every day. Michael lived in a small house by the railroad, which he inherited after his parents' tragic death. Local children often visited him because his home was like an art gallery. His drawings covered the walls, which were no less impressive than those of professional artists. Besides, Michael composed poems, but he never wrote them down anywhere. He read them aloud and then forgot them. However, his love poems often made women at the local station cry, and they said it was time for him to get married. But Michael was afraid of women and avoided serious relationships. He was a virgin, and his unusual appearance long, unkempt black beard and never cut hair made him even more mysterious. Despite his strange appearance, Michael was a kind and gentle person. While we were watching passing trains one summer evening, a woman jumped from the last carriage. Her appearance stunned us. She sat on the railroad ties stood up and started looking around. When she turned towards us, we noticed her small fangs, giving her smile a wild and airy look. Then she ran into the forest, disappearing among the trees. This event changed Michael. He became silent and withdrawn, spending a lot of time drying the woman with black hair and fiery eyes. Our stories about the mysterious woman circulated throughout the village, but no one believed the tale. After a strange incident, terrifying things started happening. People from the village were disappearing, and it was scary for everyone there. One day, even in broad daylight, a girl went missing. She had gone outside to play with her friends, and although she cried for help, no one saw her again. Search parties went into the forest, but they found horrifying signs and bloody clues, with no sign of her body. More and more women and children were vanishing, and no safety measures seemed to work. The town was in a panic, and people were afraid to go outside, even during the day. Authorities imposed a curfew, but it didn't stop the disappearances. Despite all this, Michael kept spending time in the forest. He became gloomier, and there was something eerie about him. He stopped talking to others and locked his doors to keep people out. His old friends and neighbors sensed something was wrong but were too scared to approach his house. By late autumn, fear had paralyzed the town. Women and children hardly left their homes, and the streets were empty at night. However, even the curfew couldn't stop the terrifying events. People heard screams and cries from the forest, but no one dared to search for them. But everything changed one cold winter night. Michael's neighbors saw a strange light coming from his house, so they decided to check it out. When they entered the house, they found his lifeless body inside, while his head was on a windowsill, looking horrified. The house was covered in blood, and the walls had disturbing drawings. They found the bodies of the missing women and children in a corner, with their bones mangled and partly eaten. It was a horrifying sight that even the bravest people couldn't bear. The investigation led to a chilling discovery. Michael wasn't acting alone. The woman who had disappeared last had been working with him. Some wise old women in the village believed it was the work of a werewolf. 
a creature from legends. Some of them, especially the oldest ones, remembered a similar story from their childhood. In the end, driven by their fear of the unknown and the tales from their grandmothers, the villagers took action. They locked Michael's empty house, set it on fire, and watched it burn like a matchstick. When the flames roared through the house, they heard a terrifying crash from inside, drowning out the fire's crackling. Someone inside was desperately trying to escape. A minute later, a blood-curdling scream echoed, causing several women to faint. Even the village dogs, barking incessantly before, fell silent as if ordered to, retreating to their kennels. The firefighters arrived too late. When they finally put out the last of the fire, all that remained was a black chimney pipe and a few charred logs from the walls. The following day, Investigators cleared the debris and ashes and found an unrecognizable, wholly burned human body. It was impossible to determine the person's gender, let alone their identity. But one detail stood out. Among the teeth that had survived in the charred jaw, there were two fangs, something unusual for a regular person. It all started after a painful breakup. My heartache was unbearable, so I sought solace and change in a new place. A small village in Central America seemed perfect for a few months of solitude. No one knew me here, and I knew no one. I rented a cottage by a serene lake. On the first night, I fell in love with a calmness, sitting on the porch, gazing at the twinkling stars. But on the second night, something eerie began to disturb me. Strange cries invaded my dreams, jolting me awake in a cold sweat. Night after night, they grew louder and closer. One night, at precisely 2.45 am, I ventured outside to investigate when the cries became unbearable. Carefully opening the door, I stepped onto the porch. The moon lit up the sky but I could make out nothing but thick trees in the dark lake in the darkness. The cries sounded like ghosts wandering the trees. Yet, I saw nothing. As the nights passed, the cries intensified and drew nearer. One night, on the verge of despair, someone started pounding on my door and then began to bang on the walls of my house. I couldn't call for help since my house was far from the nearest town and my phone had no signal. Determined not to sleep and to uncover the mystery, I approached the window, sipping wine for courage, and watched intently. Fear gripped my chest, but I couldn't remain ignorant. One night, at 2.45 am, I saw him a man, stark naked, wandering on my lawn. His cries were terrifying and he ran as if chased by an otherworldly presence. It wasn't an animal, but something indescribable. The man collapsed and began contorting as if losing his humanity, and his body started to transform. Before my eyes, an astonishing metamorphosis occurred. The man became a beast. His bones cracked and twisted, fur sprouted, fangs protruded, and his cries turned into howls. He had become a werewolf. I left that house and headed to the nearest village the next day. Locals told me a chilling legend about the person who had once lived there. Long ago, Satanists invaded his home and performed a horrifying ritual, transforming him into a werewolf. Since then, he had been trying to return home every night but could never find peace. I bought bus tickets and departed from that place forever, realizing that staying there would be sheer madness.